Hey everyone, I wanted to go over some new and interesting news that we have for Eden Chronicles 100 Heroes, which is set to release onto the Nintendo Switch later this year. If you're a fan of Sakoden, chances are not only you're excited for the remasters from Konami, which are set to drop, presumably based on some of the rumors I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below for the alleged release and leaked, leaked release dates, which should be somewhere around March. Uh, but if you are a fan of Sakoden, of course, Eden Chronicles is a game you probably have been keeping your eyes peeled for since it's pretty much from the original creators of the Sukoden series. And today we're going to be going over the fact that uh, they are taking to uh, an official page and have taken to social media to provide a survey so players can kind of vote in. You don't necessarily need to pre-order the game. You don't need to buy it digitally or anything like that. Whichever version of the game you're going to choose to buy, you can essentially vote in the survey as they are taken in request for what type of DLC they want to be added into the game and specifically which stories are more interesting to use so they can actually go ahead and craft them as part of the DLC, which is something really fascinating and haven't necessarily seen this been done in previous games in the past. And their official page, which I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below so you can go ahead and vote if you are so interested. They mentioned, hey everyone, welcome to the voting page for Eden Chronicles 100 Heroes DLC number 3. We are excited to share this opportunity with the community and begin the vote on the preference for DLC 3. This is a limited um, this is a limit of one vote per person. Choose your favorite from the descriptions below and cast your vote. Please tell your friends and vote. Let's decide together the future in Eden Chronicles 100 Heroes. And essentially what they do is they provide five separate options. Each one of them, um, they are providing the names of some of like the already revealed characters and kind of like what the story is going to be about and they could presumably develop it further and make it part of the DLC as the game launches later this year. Maybe this will be DLC for 2024 onward. I'm not necessarily sure. They don't make that very clear. So out of the five choices that mentioned that one of them is Tales of Yokai Hunt. This includes the character Yugo, Miu, Hakuin, and etc. The sample story means that you join forces with the samurai Yugo and Ninja Mio and a swordman Hakujin on a secret mission from the east. Reach to put down the escaped yokai monsters and survive a challenging boss battles. Uh, so that's pretty much one of the optional stories. And they mentioned three characters, but as you can see, see uh, there's a, like a little bit of a silhouette in the background. That's most likely another character you're going to be able to have access to. Uh, maybe it's unlockable through this specific story or it's just a character they haven't necessarily revealed, which will be also part of this specific story. Um, another one of the stories that they mention here is that Conquest of the Sands uh, with the characters uh, Euphirius, Bernard, and Scarlet. A sample story tells a tale of an unreal war between the Sandwalkers and their rivals, the Desert Mercenaries. Embark on an eccentric journey with Euphirius, Bernard, and Scarlet and the other exciting figures from this installment. So this one's a little bit more vague. And based on the outline, they are kind of showcasing another little bit of a shark character there. I uh, haven't necessarily seen these characters before, so I do find it fascinating that they're doing animal characters. Again, so Skoden was very popular for having uh, animal type uh, characters. And actually, if you have seen, been seeing some of the clips that I've been sharing uh, regarding the new Sukoden uh, 1 and 2 HD remasters, they uh, recently put up some really good ones with some of the uh, animal characters in Sukoden 2 as well as showcasing some of the attacks there. Link in the description below if you haven't necessarily caught a glimpse of that. On the third option, they mention that Elden Magics includes Marcus, Milana, and Quinn. And the sample story says, a journey through the story of their origins and the collapse once the prosperous Elden realm and discover the secrets of the rune lessons. Lenses. Uh, the collectors will not want to miss out on the supernatural story involving Marcus, Milana, and Quinn, and other mysterious characters. So they showcase two of them there. Uh, presumably the other one would be Quinn. I'm not necessarily sure. Again, the silhouette characters is interesting because in some they showcase the name, but they don't say like if that's the character of the story, it's a little bit unclear. Uh, option number four is called Kings of the Neighborhood. This one involves Dr. Corkay. Code L and Frida. Uh, so it says sample story partake in this fun town activities with Dr. Corkay, Code L and Frida, and more entertaining characters roaming around the town where Noah's Alliance is headquartered. Play against the most challenging Bay Goma game opponents 
test your culinary abilities in cooking battles and try the new Eden Chronicles mini games. So this one is not necessarily going to be more story rooted, but more like a casual tale of some of the characters already being part of the town, most likely that you already had recruited. And last but not least, option number five is called the Magical Girls Assemble. This one includes Malorn, Carrie, and Momo. Uh, the story says that Malorn, Carrie, and Momo, and other magical uh, power girls set off on a hilarious story that is too cute to pass up. The alliance forever changed after a bit of a girl power was poured into the mix. Face off against mind-bending unique battle scenarios and leave it to the magical girls to save the day. So this is not only an um, even more comical one than the last option number four, but of course is playing into the tropey aspects of most likely just some of the spell casting characters in the game. And of course you can see on the left side in the little like silhouette, one of the characters is actually seems to be a male. So uh, they were definitely going to be playing a, a little bit of a, a game there with a, a male character as a magical girl, which is a relatively a popular trope in that regard. So once again, link in the description below, if you choose to kind of like vote in for whichever one of the stories, to me, the third one seems to be the most interesting. Um, but again, I'm interested in the shark character. I just never have seen that character before. So maybe seeing more of them will be interesting as well. It does make me wonder, though, why they're kind of choosing to just let players choose uh, as to what tells they're going to share instead of just kind of like making them all at the end of the day. Maybe again, I'm just just development work. Maybe it's easy as a gamer to say, well, just make all of them. But of course, when it comes to development work, probably is not as easy. Uh, but if it's DLC and players will request for it, more DLC, especially if it's paid DLC, which presumably it will be, um, you know, adding all of these stories eventually gradually as you know, a season pass or whatever the case is, or will probably go a long way. And of course, get more fanfare, which this game has had already plenty of fan uh, game support. Plenty of people have kind of taken to social media, just saying kind of already trashing the uh, aforementioned Sukoden 1H2 HD remasters in favor of Ian and Chronicles 100 Heroes, which I don't necessarily understand. I think both games can code six quite on its own. If Konami is making this uh, Sukoden HD remasters uh, to kind of gauge interest and eventually release a brand new Sukoden game with the original game's art style, I have no problem with that whatsoever. And I don't think anyone should, especially if they're fans of the original two games. Ian and Chronicles seems to be like it's gonna be doing his own thing. Rising wasn't necessarily that much of a hit. I did play that on Game Pass. I did play, review that on the Nintendo Switch. Wasn't a big fan of it, but uh, this one, of course, is looking more traditional in RPG fashion. And as long as it's not full of fetch quests, I think it will be a hit. But that's about all the information I have for you guys today. Once again, link in the description below if you choose to vote. And if you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.